Some time ago, Kingdom Come Deliverance received a new update which added a hardcore difficulty, but because that term evokes other images in my mind, I'll mostly be referring to it as survival difficulty throughout this video. The game also received a DLC titled From the Ashes, which I still haven't touched, and soon a Hunscape on DLC will be added as well, or has already been added. Lots of things can happen during the creation of a video. But what is this video about, I hear you asking? Well, it's an introduction to a tutorial series for Kingdom Come which I'm going to name Medieval Survival Guide. An original and groundbreaking title, I know. Throughout this series, I will try to give you all the knowledge you need to survive the hardcore mode and in today's video I'll give you the rundown of this difficulty as well as share with you some tips and tricks on how to best set yourself up during the prologue and the following hours. Let's start with the beginning. What is this survival difficulty and how does it compare to the regular one? Simply put, the game gets harder. The saving mechanic is the first thing that is reworked with the removal of the autosave function. The only way to save now is to either sleep in an owned bed or by drinking a savior schnapps. The second change increases the fighting difficulty because it removes the combat interface that shows your attack directions or the timing indicator for parries and dodges. Now you'll have to get used to reading your opponent's moves and react accordingly without the help of this 5 pointed star. Speaking of interface, the health and stamina bar have also been removed and now you'll have to determine your status by interpreting visual and audio effects. If the screen is bloody, you should run away and if you're breathing heavily, it's time to take a break. Fast travel, map indicators and compass directions have also been removed, effectively forcing you to constantly pay attention to where you are and where you're going if you don't want to get lost in a forest. Oh, and vendors will pay you less for your goods and charge you more for theirs, which may make it harder for you to make money, especially if you avoid employing dishonorable methods of wealth acquisition. Last but not least, you are given a list of 9 disabilities to hinder you throughout the game and you have to pick at least 2 of them. I personally chose all 9 just to see if the game is impossible to play. It isn't, you just need to adapt your playstyle to them. So before we finally dive into the main subject of this video, allow me to review each of these illnesses and discuss how they impact the gameplay. The first pair affects your sleep quality. The nightmares will leave you in a weakened state for 2 hours after you wake up, and sleepwalking will sometimes make you wake up in a random place far from where you went to sleep, sometimes you may even wander into a secret area. The second pair is here to make your life hell. Brittle bones forces you to avoid falling, for even the slightest tumble can break your legs. Hemophilia increases the probability and severity of bleeding both in combat and after a falling accident. If you pick this pair, pack a lot of bandages and healing salves. The next three ailments aren't as bad as the previous ones, but can still increase the difficulty in indirect ways. Consumption reduces your stamina regeneration, effectively forcing you to carefully consider how you use it, Shakes will make archery and thievery harder, and Numb Skull severely slows down player progression. The last pair of debuffs are actually pretty harmless. The tapeworm forces you to eat more often, and claustrophobia makes you deal less damage if you wear a closed helmet. Now that you finally know what survival difficulty is about, it's time to talk about how to withstand its challenges. The best way to ensure your survival is to set yourself up with some skills, money and gear during your stay in Silver Scallets before it gets wiped off the map. One of the most important skills you can train early on is Herbalism because it has multiple applications. You can sell the herbs, you can stockpile them for later use in alchemy, and once you reach level 10 you can unlock the Leg Day perk which passively trains your strength as you do flower picking. And as your herbalism skill increases, you'll pick up more and more herbs around you, gathering them with elevated efficiency. This is why the first thing you should do is spend about 15 minutes just picking up herbs. You don't need to pick up all of them, just about 100 nettles to obtain the resistance perk, and about 200 of these purple flowers named Sage, which you can sell for about 100 coins to the traders in Scalets. But why does it make sense for a blacksmith's son to pick up medicinal plants, you may ask, especially if you're into role-playing? Well, let me answer. Since Henry suffers from so many illnesses, his parents always took him to apothecaries who prescribed all kinds of tinctures and potions to alleviate his symptoms. That was a learning experience for him and, since he grew up, he's decided to ease the financial burden on his father by gathering plants and selling them to alchemists who passed Let's through town. So he's been doing that every summer. Naturally. After you gather the plants, don't sell them just yet. You will need to collect the debt from Kunesh beforehand. You, Kunesh. So go there, anger him and let him win the fist fight. Like After you take a beating, going into his house prompts Henry to say this. 
A locked chest. I'll need a lockpick to get into that. Fritz might have one. You can try dragging the fist fight longer, but if you do beat Konesh, you will not get those lockpicks early on and you will be unable to follow the rest of this guide. But you don't need to, you can just be out of skeletons in 10 minutes after starting the game and you'll be fine, but following this guide gives you a little starting bonus. Next up, we'll visit the tavern where your friends are waiting to invite you to a fun activity. You can say yes or no, it doesn't matter, what matters is talking to Fritz again so he can give you a head start into a life of crime. For lockpicks. You can use these to collect the dead from Konesh, finally, and then you can return to the tavern and talk to Bianca. Once you pick up the ale, you can do everything else your father told you to do, but don't go visit him just yet. You will need to have a sparring lesson with the local soldier, Vanyek, where he'll teach you the basics of combat. Once all of these activities are completed, use the savior schnapps given to you by Bianca to save your game and let's get to work. And by work I mean stealing. But I hear the role players asking another question. Why would an honorable bloke like Henry resort to thievery? Well, you see, it is said that those favored by God are born special. So while Henry suffers from so many conditions, he has the gift of prophetic dreams, or sometimes nightmares. Every time you do one of the actions that saves your game, like sleeping or drinking a savior schnapps, Henry has a brief vision of the future and it doesn't end well for him. He is either caught acting naughty, or he gets hurt, or he gets killed, or the game crashes. So he envisions the worst possible scenario and he actively avoids the steps that lead there. Whatever happens in between saving and reloading your game is actually Henry's future sight acting up. There, I just made saving and reloading lore friendly. And just before he woke up today, Hal had a nightmare about his village being razed to the ground by a horde of barbarians. And today, smoke is on the horizon. So the only logical decision is to take what he can to aid him in the future, even if it belongs to someone else. If he doesn't, the Cumans will. So now let us return to talking briefly about theft. I already made a tutorial on this subject, but at that time I did not know what I know now. So I will include another, more detailed tutorial about thievery in our survival guide series, and right now I'll just leave you with a task. Search for easy or very easy locks, and when nobody's looking, pick them open. If a lock offers a bit too much resistance, cancel your action and perform it again so your pick doesn't break. I encourage you to look for such locks by yourself, but I'll give you three important places that are under lock and key. The first such place is the pantry in your own home. This chest has a skill book for Henry and can also be used to store your stolen items until you're ready to leave Scalettes. The pantry in the tavern is also a good place for spoils, which you can later sell to Bianca. She doesn't pay full price for the loot, but it's something. Still, you shouldn't come here until your lockpicking is at least at level 1, so go get some practice beforehand. But the best place to raid before the Cumans do it is Deutsch's house. He has some fancy clothes that he won't need after the day, so you might as well take them. Nobody in Skeletes will buy them, so store them at home until you leave if you can carry no more. Unfortunately, you can't pick pockets, so if you desire someone else's belongings, you can try knocking them unconscious. I personally didn't do this on my playthrough, but there's nothing that can stop you from trying. Just save your game before you attempt anything like that. Before you continue with a main mission, see what else can be done to increase your wealth and abilities. If you play your cards right, you can leave Skeletes with about 500 Groshen, some fancy clothes and increased skills. If you have followed this guide in the exact specified order, you might have noticed that when you return to your father, he says that the ale got warm. So go grab him a cold one. Once you complete all the tasks he gave you, Skeletes gets raided. As you run away, you can kill two birds with one stone if you whistle once you get exactly in this place. You will distract the Cumans who ambushed Theresa and call yourself a horse. Mount up and run away. And save the game once more because running away from the Cuman horse archers is difficult. Why is it difficult? Because your horse runs out of stamina if you just gallop away. Here's a quick horse riding tutorial. There are three speeds. Trot is equivalent to walking and it's slow. Canter is like a jog and doesn't use your horse's stamina. And galloping is the sprint speed which is what you'll be doing to escape the Cumans. But the horse's stamina is limited and if you just gallop till you reach Talmberg, Horsey will throw you off and the Cumans will kill you. 
So what you need to do at some point is give your horse about 5 to 10 seconds of cantering so it can regenerate enough stamina to continue galloping to Talmberg. This is where you'll do it. When you go off the road and into this stream, the cumans will get confused for a few seconds. During this confusion you can keep going along the stream and when you get back on the road, start galloping again. Then after that near-death experience you'll arrive to Talmberg. You can snatch a few things from here too, but most chests can't be opened with your current skills, so just leave as fast as you can and swing by the tavern. Here you'll rent yourself a room and will be able to store your loot in this chest before you get back to your hometown. Once you reach Skalitz once more, give no quarter to the bandits that roam this place, because some may have gear that will help you in your journey, especially this guy right here, dressed in dark clothes. Those would look good on you, too bad nobody will see you at night when you rummage through their room. At some point you'll also meet your good neighbors, Bishek, who may challenge your manliness with a fist fight. If you lose this fight, you're dead and you lose all of your unsaved progress, so if the fight doesn't go your way, pull your sword out and he'll run away like a chicken. But he doesn't really run away, it's more of a tactical retreat on his part, because he's just going to bring friends to beat you to a pulp. Once that happens... You will wake up in Rate and your journey begins. Now let me share the roadmap I used on my own playthrough. First you'll have to talk to the miller and finish his mission, the good thief. You'll pay off the debt you have towards him and gain access to the only vendor that offers you a good price for your items, even if they're stolen. You can quickly be done with this mission if you just pay the executioner 20 coins for the ring, with no hassle. It's a worthy investment in my opinion. After this you can continue with the main quest if you want to increase your combat effectiveness or just ignore it and get money. You can do that by stealing or gathering flowers or whatever. You'll need about 1500 groschen so you can buy your first horse, Trojan, from the Neuhof stables. Before you leave for Neuhof however, ask the people of Rata if there's anyone who can teach you how to read. After you do that go towards Neuhof by following this road leading east of the big town and buy the horse. Once you have your horse, ride along this road towards Ujits. You'll know you're heading the right way if you see this camp near the road followed by a forest and then a wooden bridge across this small river. Go down this road and you'll see your destination. Here you'll want to have a chat with a local scribe who will teach you how to read. Reading is a very important skill, especially in this difficulty because without it you will be unable to brew your own potions or accelerate the training of certain skills via skill books. Once you learn to read, you can do whatever. You can continue the main quest or you can increase your wealth and social status. Do whatever you want, I only told you what you need to do early on to have a head start in this medieval world. Well, I guess this is it. I didn't teach you how to do stuff, I just told you what you need to do to set yourself up with a great start. The how-tos will come in the next videos. The very next one is a rehash of my old thievery tutorial. The old one will stay there because people click on it and it shall act as a gateway to this new series. I frankly don't even know if this series is needed or even wanted, but I have to do something on my channel because the lack of videos is disturbing. But yeah, this was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see each other next time. Thank you for watching and bye bye.